Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some RX tongs. RX is a tong that makes a bunch of pre-cut tong blanks, and uh, I will put a link to them down in the description down below. First up, right up front, they sent these to me free of charge, um, and they are not paying for this review or video. It's just something that they sent me, so this way I could take and make a review of their um, their product there. So we're going to start working on their first and most easiest tong blank, which is this number one, which is just your basic um, all around tong, if you will. Pretty basic, cut blanks. I've got them wrapped in plastic here. Uh, they also sent over some tools that we'll get to get into here in just a little bit. They sent me over this like a vice clamp type deal that you that helps you line up the jaws. They also sent me a little rivet header as well. Um, it's just a little tiny small rivet header for supporting the bottom end of the rivet that comes with the tongs. And then they also sent me this really nice twisting wrench that I will be using uh, that has two different sizes. And again, that's for just different types of tongs. I believe they sell all these products on their website um, and you can check them out there. I will go ahead and cut these apart here. Get these all cut apart. These have been sitting on the docket ever since Christmas. Well, before Christmas, really, to do. Uh, I've just been so busy here lately trying to get other orders out the door and still working on that. But I figure I'd give these a go at any rate. So here we go. So this is what you're looking at. Pretty basic, um, just simple. Uh, twist like tongs as most of the pre-cuts are. The thing that we're going to work on very first and foremost is we're actually going to work on the jaws themselves. We're going to get these heated up and then we're going to go over to the vise and get these twisted first where they need to be. Once we get these twisted into place we'll cool off this end and then we'll flip it around and we will round off our tong reins and then set this whole thing up for the rivet and then and these will go together, something like here. And then we'll get into all the other little special tooling for lineup and stuff. So let's go ahead, get these hot, <coughs> get these both hot, and get into that now. Okay, so enters our first tool. This is a twisting wrench and uh, of sorts, or a turning wrench. Some will call these scrolling forks if you radius the inside edges but they have a large slot and a smaller slot. We're gonna use a smaller slot to actually make the twist on the tongs while we lock and hold it in the, uh, the boss area in the jaws of the vise. So let me go ahead and grab out one of these. They're nice and hot. Um, the hotter you can get these, the better you'll be. Otherwise you'll have to take a couple little heats on here. I've got this still heating up. Just give it just a few more seconds. But yeah, so we'll basically be using this twisting wrench to grab a hold of the jaw and twist it. We're gonna secure the boss of the jaws, uh, the boss of the tongs in the vise. So this way it's securely clamped. That way it's not contorting any. And then we will slip this down and go ahead and give it the twist. It is important to make sure both twists go exactly the same direction. All right, this ought to be good and hot now. Yep, both are pretty good. I'm gonna bring over the one. I'm gonna go ahead and lock it good in the vise jaw. Make sure the whole boss is there. Then I'm gonna grip up close to the jaw and I'm going to go to the left with this twist, just like so. And then ideally it will be mostly squared up exactly like the other one is. Now, pull that out. Take a quick look at it. That looks good. That's ready to go back in the fire. Go ahead and stick that back in the fire. Let me make sure I'm telling you right because they should both be to the left. Yep. Just like in forging them. Go ahead and get this locked in the vise yet again. And again, using the small end up close to the back end of the jaw, we're gonna twist what will be to the left or towards the camera as you're viewing it there. All right, 
So that's got that nice and twisted. And uh, there you go. Pretty simple, pretty basic, not too hard. Now we're gonna go ahead and heat this thing back up and we'll be over at the anvil and we're gonna hammer a little bit out of that twist. We're gonna clean up that twist. Okay, so we got this piece good and hot. We're going to come to the near side of the anvil and we're gonna hammer just straight down on the flat here. Woo! That little bit of oil I had on there from earlier <laughs> scared me a bit. Wasn't expecting that out of oil. Anyways, got to see me get all jumpy. All right, so we're just gonna hammer that out, go to the far side. We're just trying to hammer that twist out a little bit. Good to go, good to go. And again, we're just trying to get that twist hammered out of there, get a little more roundness into that corner. All right, and so there we have it. Again, we're not trying to forge this at this point. We're just trying to hammer out that twist. So once you have it at this stage, go ahead and brush it really good. And this thing's gonna be ready to just set off to the side while you get the other one to this point. I like working my tongs in stages. So I get one stage of this process done, and then I go into the next stage of the process. So there we go, that stage is done. So now I'll do the that same thing to the other half. Okay, so here we go. We've got two things in relation here. We flip one over on top of the other, and now you guys can see how these basic tongs are going to come together. Of course, you can make, I'm not gonna do it in this video because I don't know what type of tongs I wanna make these into, and I might just give these away at one of our live streams that we do every Friday, well, every other Friday night um, at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. A little shameless self-plug there. We might be giving away this set at some point, so I'm not going to make these into any specific jaw type, but of course, then you can fit this to whatever jaw uh, specific thing that you want. So I'm gonna let these cool down naturally. Then, once they cool down naturally, I will make sure they're fully cool off on this end of it, so I can now hold that while I round out my reins. And I'll be right back with you once we're ready to do that. Okay, so basically I've heated up a section almost as long as my anvil is wide. And now I'm just gonna hammer off the corners all the way up to about the width of my anvil. Now I've found that most anvils, if you do this, use your width of your anvil as your measurement it really helps you keep everything nice and evened up, and that's about the correct positioning for your hand, anyhow. Usually you don't hold up on the tong, you don't choke up on tongs, so it helps to use that as your measurement tool. Keeps your hands back on the tongs where they should be there. So again, Get that completely cleaned up. And that'll help us make these more regular as we go here. Helps if you go on top of your anvil crossways or lengthways of the anvil to help make sure everything's nice and square and level. 
So there we go. That's all you have to do for that. Uh, it's just advisable that you take off those little sharp corners and then I leave the rest just like it is. I may uh, take a flap disc and just kind of just barely knock off those sharper edges. Uh, but that's all you have to do as far as the hammering. Of course, if you want to draw these tong reins out a lot longer, you can do that as well um, and, and do whatever. But this is kind of just a good size tong right out the gate for you. So you shouldn't have to do too much drawing. So we'll go ahead and set that one aside for a second while we work on this other one. So again, same thing. Keep the distance roughly about the distance of the anvil across. And hammer your corners off. And then we'll square this whole thing up, make sure it's all in line. Again, put as much time as you want to in this to make it suited to your specifications. The point of these tongs are for them to be fairly quick to make. That way you're not spending eons making tongs and uh, it takes forever to make the tongs and you never get around to the rest of the project. So there we have it. Bam, those two together. Well, you guys can see that all right. Not get those together there under the view of the camera. But uh, yeah, so not too bad, rounded those off. Now we will let these cool down. After these have cooled down naturally, again, and the reason for letting them cool down naturally is you're giving that steel time to rest. You have introduced stresses into the piece and it's really nice to give it a chance to just relax a little bit and the kind of the stresses to work their way out of the piece just with a slow cooling, if you will. It's not really normalizing, it's just allowing it to cool. Of course, you could normalize, say the jaws um, or the reins a little bit would be fine. But again, just letting it cool down naturally will help you out, especially up here at the boss where we're going to need to drill. Because if you were to take and quench this off in water, carbon steel or mild carbon steel, like a mild steel does, has in it, it has just enough carbon in it that it will toughen a little bit and you'll have a bit more harder time getting a drill bit through it. Um, although it will not harden to a degree that is suitable for a tool, like a tool steel, uh, it will toughen up to a degree and it'll be harder to get through that mill scale and everything else to actually drill this. And yes, that's right, I said drill this. I'm going to drill these as I find that that is the most accurate way to take and put in the rivet. So after these cools down, I will go ahead and drill this and I will be right back with you when we're ready to rivet this up. Okie doke everyone, here we are back at the anvil. So I went ahead and just found my center point. Some of you are probably going to ask, how did you find the center in this? It's not too hard. Basically, you take and lay a level or a line across here from the where this waist is here and where the jaw is here. You just lay a ruler across here and then you go directly in the center of that and that will put you right on center for your center point. If you are a little off center, it's really not that big of a deal. But that's how I find center is I just eyeball straight across this using this as my reference point and it will generally lead you right into the center. Then I just stack these. I've shown this in other videos. I just stack one on top of the other, hold them together and spot drill through one to get my mark on the other. And uh, that's how I did that. Now, one thing to talk about this is the rivet that we are using is a 5 16 rivet. So it's just a bit above uh, 3 8 well, it's just a bit below 3 8 of an inch. Um, this would probably be my only gripe with these type tong sets is sometimes they'll send them with these smaller rivets. 
I would try to upsize this if you have the ability to, to a 3 8 inch rivet as a bare bones minimum. You'll get a lot more life out of the rivet than you will with one of these 5 16 If it fails at a later date, which not saying that it will, but if something like this were to fail at a later date, you can always, of course, drill and go to the next size rivet and put it back together. Um, also, they give you plenty long enough of a rivet for you to go ahead and cut off. I did have about a quarter inch of material that I had to remove uh, in order to have the appropriate length to make the head on the other side of this. So, through the hole we go, just like you would say, just like you would see normally, through the hole we go, and now we're gonna take and use this little rivet set tool. As you can see it here, we're gonna use that. We're gonna set this right on top of there, so that way it'll protect that head and keep these things nice and aligned. I'm gonna use my thigh to take and hold up one end of the tong rein, and I'm gonna press down firmly with the other. And I'm gonna give this a couple good, quick, snapping blows. I want that to kind of tighten up on there and to where it locks these tongs together where they're not gonna come back off. I also like to do this where they're open a little bit. They're not completely closed because you'll notice that this will lock up just a little bit. But there you go, you can see how that rivet head on that side is nice and domed still. And then you've got that one going. So there you go. Now, if you have a top rivet set, you can go ahead and use that to take and drive this to the right amount of dome for yourself. They gave you enough material that if you do have a domed rivet head, if you do have a dome doming tool for the top of the rivet, you can use that. Um, I'm doing it like as if maybe you don't have that and maybe you all you have is this tool right here. So you have to shorten the rivet just a little bit, probably about a quarter of an inch. But now we're gonna go ahead and hammer around this and get this joint to go together. I'm gonna peen that up. And now we need to get this whole thing hot and finish driving that together. That will help these two surfaces of the tong mate together nicely. So let's go ahead and get that in the fire and we'll drive that rivet a little bit more home. All right. So here we are. It doesn't have to be super hot, as you can tell. We'll put that rivet back down in there, and I'm gonna broaden that head out a little bit more. Clean that rivet up. We just wanna make sure we got this really nice and secure, and those surfaces are coming together like they're supposed to. Okay, so that's good. You can still kind of still rotate them. That's good that way. And, you know, surprisingly enough, or not so surprising, those things are basically already set up and ready to go. I mean, they put a lot of thought into the cut of these to make them exactly in line. So there's very little hammer tapping or anything I would have to do there. Okie doke. We've got their whole little tong adjustment tool here in for, with the rivet. This is meant to allow the rivet a place to go. And we're gonna be able to squeeze that boss nice and tight with that, which is a really handy tool, if you ask me. Don't say so myself. And then we're gonna be able to actually adjust this with this tong fork here, if you will. We're gonna be able to make these adjustments very quick and easy with this uh, again, with this bending fork. This is a very handy tool. If you don't order anything else from them, I would order this, um, 110%. This is a very, very handy tool. Um, I like it, I like it, I like it. So again, that gets that more in line. Probably went a little far there with my bend. Take out some of it there. There you go. And flip it over, do the other side. And get it out of the tool. I should have thought this out a little bit better before I start filming. Ah. User error, not the tool. <laughs> not the tool's fault. That's just user's error. Again, press that down nice and tight. And again, 
we're going to bend this over to get it in line and then bend it back. And now we've got that nice cross going um, where those handles are nice and lined up. And of course, you know, I'm going to use this a little longer fork here to just double make sure of that measurement. Sorry guys, talking my brain out while I'm doing it, just to make sure I'm lined up the way it needs to be. So I'm not telling you wrong, there we go. While it's clamped up there, i brush it a bit. All right now, it's doing it to me again there, ladies and gents. There we go. <laughs> Any hoozles. So there you have it. Hopefully you guys can see that nice fair square. It's got those nice and lined up now. It's got those handles put right in line. And that's basically it. I would, as I would go ahead and quench this personally in oil and um, give it a good scrubbing first with the butcher block brush. Give it a good scrubbing, get it nice and clean. Put your butcher block brush of that scale after you're done. And then in a bucket of oil, the way I like to do this afterwards, it, it gives it kind of like a season to finish. When you do a bucket of oil on this piece, you dip it just like you would in water and work the joint on most tong reins. I do it in oil instead, and it gives it a really nice nonstick kind of surface and really prevents rust. But yeah, so that's it. What do I think? I think they're pretty good. Like I said, I have a couple more of these videos to do. So make sure you stick around the channel and check those out. Subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Otherwise you won't know when I do the videos on this. But yeah, I think these are a really good beginner set. You'll be able to knock these up pretty quick, and I believe they're fairly priced. So make sure you go check them out. Again, if you'd subscribe, hit that bell for notification. That really helps out the, helps out the channel when you watch the videos, and uh, we greatly appreciate it. Without further ado, God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.